What do you want them to know? Well, I would add some things to what the congressman just said, which is we do know that this individual that came to Washington State was tried on Rendesivir, which is the antiviral drug that they tend to use for severe cases. So perhaps he had a severe case. We're, we're seeing, and, and he also mentioned an important point, we are getting some scientific information from Chinese scientists that about 15 percent of the cases develop this characteristic pneumonia that really can put you in trouble, and that's when they would use the antiviral drug. We've also seen cases already where there's recurrence of symptoms, because viewers might say, well, wait, I thought that patient was getting better. I thought he was out of the woods. Well, the problem with a lot of respiratory viruses, and this includes the flu, by the way, is you can, and people out there who have had the flu know this, you can think you're better, and then a few days later, you get worse again or another infection comes in. So th this, is, this is background information. I don't know if it applies specifically to this case. But the fact that one person tragically died from this coronavirus doesn't necessarily mean that there's going to be a high case fatality rate. In South Korea, Kristen, mm -hmm. where we've seen over 3,000 cases already, there's been about 21, 22 deaths. So it, it's, it, it's does, it does, most of the time, the vast majority of the time in healthy people, it is a, still a mild virus. Yeah, Dr. Siegel, I just want to press you a little bit more on that point because I think one of the things that folks are having a hard time understanding about the coronavirus is you have somebody like Bill Gates who just wrote that, quote, this is starting to behave like the once in a century pathogen that we've been worried about. But then on the flip side, you have somebody like, uh, you know, President Trump who's saying, you know, this is something that is concerning, but he's kind of equating it to the flu and saying that what you need to be doing are the same things you need to be doing to prevent the flu, which is washing your hands, covering your mouth when you sneeze and cough. Help people understand how they should view this coronavirus in terms of how worried they should really be. That's very well stated. It is not the same as the flu. It's different than the flu. The flu gives you fatigue and muscle aches. This tends to give you a cough, shortness of breath, and the people in Nebraska Medical Center emphasized to me, their medical director, Dr. Wadman, emphasized to me, it is, comes along with a high fever, mm. more higher than the flu usually. And the shortness of breath and cough and the bronchitis type picture, something in your lungs, is what is concerning us. And the other issue is that it's new. So we're following it mm. and we're tracking it. We cannot in any way, shape or form diminish the impact of the flu. That is a worldwide killer, as was just said, to an enormous amount. But here's what is confusing viewers and why everyone gets so worried. What they're seeing is public health officials going really strong to try to stamp this out before it takes root like the flu. That's mm. the goal here, and that's what we're actually doing a fairly good job at. If we can track cases and isolate them, the concern in the two California cases and the Washington State of Oregon case, now the possibility of a New Jersey case, is if we can't track where the case came from, we can't isolate or identify anyone right. that might and have gotten it. That's when it gets that little out of hand. Right, and, and President Trump, the Trump administration, moved very quickly at the very beginning of this outbreak to try to impose some travel restrictions, some mandatory quarantines, and things like that. Dr. Siegel, really quick before you go, if people are worried that they have the coronavirus, what should they do? First of all, if, very quickly, the travel restrictions can't be completely effective per, per Homeland Security that I spoke to because the more this spreads to other countries like Japan and South Korea, the harder it is to really control it. And people aren't going to admit when they've been to these areas necessarily on secondary stops. What should people out there do? People out there maybe should understand that treat this, this fear you have like any other but I mean, respiratory do you go, virus. Do you, do you call the CDC? Do you go immediately to your doctor? Do you call 911? What's that first step if you're worried that you've caught the coronavirus? It's the same step that you would have for any respiratory virus, Kristen. In other words, if you have a high fever and you're coughing and you're short of breath, you've got to be seen. If you're feeling fatigued with a high fever, you've got to be seen. Whether you go to an emergency room or call your physician, you don't call the CDC because the vast majority of the time it is not the coronavirus. We're talking about it here a lot, but this is also respiratory virus season. What we need most of all is we need identification 